Good morning, everyone. This is R Vermil 47, Robert Vermillion from Dallas, Texas. I'm making this video on March the 19th, 2012. Uh, the current time is 11.08 a.m. that I'm making this video, which would be 1,609 Zulu. As you can see, there is a moderate risk of severe weather now that does include the Dallas area. This video is mainly going to focus more on Texas as some, as some of the details just because I'm going to cross post this as opposed to cross dress it. I'm going to cross post it and uh, into uh, uh, Facebook just because I have a lot of friends and family on Facebook. I don't post often that much over there anymore, but um, this is a this is a potential uh, severe weather event sh uh, shaping up that could affect the area. Anyway, as you can see, what was just a slight risk yesterday has become a moderate risk with Dallas right here in the middle, and um, this whole area is going to be up pretty ripe for some very large hail. I think we're going to see some really big hail reports today. Uh, a lot of damaging wind. I'm sure there's going to be scattered reports of tornadoes um, on and off. And uh, as the day wears on, it'll be easier to tell as to where uh, the best shot for tornadoes will be. But right now, I mean, I can't roll out tornadoes anywhere in this. I can't roll out tornadoes anywhere in this this box right here. Uh, the, the, the slight risk, the yellow. Now again, the green is the areas where there is just a chance for uh, decent thunderstorm activity. Okay, I've showed you the 300 millibar heights. This is the uh, jet stream analysis. Uh, this was done with the 12Z uh, run of the RUC, the rapid update cycle uh, run, uh, uh, model. But this comes from the uh, when they let the weather balloons go up at uh, 12Z in the morning, which is 7 a.m here central daylight time uh, and I may have said that it was 11 something uh, standard time but it's daylight savings time yuck, right now uh, massive jet coming in the west coast it's just now coming on the coast where we can actually have balloons to send up and measure it otherwise we've just been using like pilot reports that go uh, fly around in there occasionally and uh, just give a report back to the National Weather Service and we can only use that sometimes to forecast how strong this jet is. Well, I'm seeing wind gusts now in the jet stream probably in excess of 200 miles an hour. That may be pressing it a little but it is approaching 200 miles an hour and it's on the back side of this big trough right here. Here's Texas if you had made it out. Dallas, Texas would be right here. So our wind, our jet stream right now is in the 50, 60, 70 mile an hour range. And uh, we did have a few showers this morning. In fact, there was a couple of rumbles of thunder. First piece of energy slid up here yesterday, or slid by yesterday, and is now up here. And uh, since there's so much energy back behind in this, it's going to make this a slow moving system, which means this system is going to bring for my folks here in Texas a wide variety of severe type weather so we'll get into that here more shortly again I just wanted to show you the the intense jet that's coming on shore in, in the west and the deep trough trough that says it's as big as the United States as, as far as the depth depth of it from north to south and again the strong it's just it's a very strong very strong trough and uh, I'll show that to you on satellite and you'll be able to see when you look on satellite I'm fixing to change to that you can see out here how this is the big upper level storm system okay this is a water vapor satellite uh, from the next lab uh, College of DuPage uh, weather their weather page and um, if it's not just too obvious right off the bat, here it is. If I have to point it out, this again, here's Texas down here. Where I showed you the jet coming down here. Okay, here's where we've got the uh, 200 mile an hour winds. We've got 150 mile an hour winds in this part right here. Here's the actual storm system. And the more this moves 
kind of over that way because it's taking this is taking its time getting down the slower this system moves across right here we've got a decent line of uh, uh, squall line of thunderstorms moving slowly across west central Texas I mean it, it's the eastward movement of this line is only at about 10 miles an hour that's going to cause some flooding folks definitely some flooding the central sections of this trough you can see the little white puffy clouds in there show that it is a cold upper level trough in other words it's the air is very cold above uh, that's what's going to help lead to a lot of hail reports that are probably going to be more than we've seen in a while with this storm. But again, just fr from looking at the uh, the upper level, the uh, jet, stream, str jet stream chart, and then looking at this, it is it's easy to correlate jet stream and then what's really out there, what you can see right now. Okay, here's the composite radar from the College of DuPage. And uh, here's the squall line I mentioned out in West Texas, running from about Wichita Falls to about Abilene, back down into the San Angelo area. We've had scattered showers here. This gave me some thunder this morning as it moved through. More energy. The thing that concerns me right now is the fact that anywhere in this area, and let me put the counties on, kind of tell you where you are. Here's Dallas County right here. Tarrant County, Denton County, Johnson County, and Ellis County. Those are some of the ones that uh, are the areas that people that are going to that may see this on. Since I'm going to cross post it on YouTube, uh, I mean on uh, Facebook, may see this. But anyway, that's kind of to give you your bearings. Anywhere in here, we see the sun shine today. It's only going to make the air much more unstable and very ripe for severe weather this system will continue to slowly fill in we're going to see stuff out ahead of it little little storms that get severe out ahead of this line will be the ones that will be the potential tornado makers now in a moderate risk you always realize that there is a, a much better risk for tornadoes and again, like I said, this is going to be a big hailer storm. There's lots of wind. I don't know if you've been out this morning or not, but the wind is howling like crazy out there. Then we look back here. This is still the base of that trough that I told you about. It has to come past us before we finally can shut all this off. And that's going to lead to a flooding potential. As these rains fall, and we've got plenty of water in the atmosphere for it to fall, uh, they're going to start piling up and as you can see if they don't move very fast to the east they keep training over themselves it's what's called training just like box cars on a, a train track they roll over the same place over and over and over and it's we're going to see some flooding out of that and um i'm going to show you some projected uh, rainfall potential in a second which is uh, quite impressive for the the dallas fort worth area which i'll be again like i said this i'm shooting this mainly uh talking more about the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area and North Texas just uh, because uh, I'm cross posting again I've said cross posting enough now so I can move on but anyway we've got this coming this is more energy back here that will sling around we'll see this begin to fill in there's a severe thunderstorm watch out west of us there's gonna be probably a I would say at least a severe thunderstorm watch if not a tornado watch probably issued for the north of us and I can tell you by noon or there after we probably will have a tornado watch in our area so we will just need to keep the keep keep our eyes and ears out this is a day when you live down here in texas all my texas people keep your eyes and ears open keep your weather radio on standby on alert because you're not going to know unless you're standing out there or you happen to be watching TV if a severe thunderstorm or a tornado is fixing to bear down on your county, your town, your city so keep your eyes and ears out folks use your best judgment on that again the more sun we see in this area the better the potential for severe weather as the afternoon wears on okay as I said um, this is a up close of the this is actually the, the would be the Fort Worth which here's Tarrant County right here 
the Fort Worth County warning area is outlined here. I'm here, Dallas, Dallas County here. I have family in Cleaver. I have family and friends in Midlothian, in Mansfield, all, all around the, the area here. I have friends definitely in Johnson County and family all over. But check out these for right now, this is forecasted rainfall totals through Wednesday. Okay, that's not like this is all going to happen today. But four to five inches of rain. I'll take it. I tell you, I'll take it. It's going to come with a cost, but I'll take it because we've we got to continue to keep our water coming up so that when the real summer gets here, and it will, uh, we'll have enough water in our reservoirs here in North Texas to, to keep us and plenty of water and not any have any water problems and also possibly help other sections of Texas that are still reeling from a really bad drought so as you can see the gradient goes along here four to five then the five to six inches up towards Greenville and Parrish Texas uh, my cousin that lives up in this area is gonna see some good rain on the, out for his uh, horses out in the hay fields so that'll be uh, interesting uh, to see if uh, he gets what he needs. I don't know if it's the time of the year. You need rain for hay, but again, rain we take. Uh, this line right here delineates these six to eight plus inches. So again, it, it, this is just a, a, a large storm, storm, storm that's going to cause a lot of rain. It's just a, it's going to be a nice for North Texas. It's going to, what's going to happen is we're going to have flash flooding this afternoon when we the storms start continuing to, to train on themselves there's gonna be flash flooding during uh, individual thunderstorms and then as the week goes on I believe we're gonna start to see some pretty bad river flooding as in the Trinity River and the Brazos River Valley and the uh, Colorado River Valley are gonna all get a lot of watershed from this uh, so it's going to be a, probably an all-week ordeal as far as uh, talking about the weather here in North Texas anyway. I wanted to go back to the uh, day one convective outlook real quick just to show you again where the moderate risk is and the slight risk and uh, that's called the categorical outlook. In other words, that's just kind of everything. If we look at what the tornado potential is, okay, we see that there's a 10% chance of tornadoes within a 25 with anywhere within a 25 miles of a point is how they describe it anywhere in this yellow colored area 5% chance of a tornado in this brownish color and then a 2% chance in the green okay Dallas we're sitting right here smack dab in the middle of this 10% chance so again we've got to watch our atmosphere this afternoon there I think it's going to be iffy in this area right here now if we want to look and see where the best chance for a damaging wind is going to be there's a 45 percent chance of wind damage across south uh, I guess that'd be southeast Oklahoma down into uh, all of north central Texas all the way down into the hill country and even the Edwards Plateau I believe that's the Edwards Plateau. That may be edging it there uh, for wind damage. And again, you, not surprising considering how much the wind is already blowing out there. So can you can only think of when we've got 100 mile an hour winds above us in the jet stream and we've already got 30 mile an hour winds blowing at the surface. What can translate down in a thunderstorm to cause either a tornado or some very damaging straight line winds? And last but not least, let me show you the hail potential. Um, this is very important. Again, um, a lot of insurance folks like to understand where the hail potential is possible. Probably a lot of the construction people do too because the, the roofers will be out in big number, I'm sure, after this storm. But in this um, hatched area, it's, it's like a greater than, um, I believe, I can't remember. Hang on just a second. Let me read something here. Okay, in the hatched area, the hail is, uh, there's a 
a, a, a pretty good chance that the uh, hailstones could be greater than two inches in diameter. Okay, that's uh, that's getting up there to like um, larger than ping pong, almost golf ball size. So we've got a pretty good hatched area there. 45% chance of just damaging hail, and that's anything generally above golf ball size. And that spreads spreads out all across this area. Uh, when I looked at this morning's parameters uh, from our weather balloon that goes up here uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, now this may bore some of you, so if you click off now, I don't blame you. But some things that I look at, some numbers I look at whenever I'm deciding what the weather, uh, the severe weather potential is going to be here. Uh, I see that this morning at when the re the balloon went up. It was uh, it's usually let off at 12 Z, which is it would have been uh, 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time here in uh, Dallas Fort Worth. Um, we measure what's called CAPE is one of the measurements, and it stands for C A P E stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. I know that means nothing, but there was already 1,500 joules of CAPE available. Now that's at 7 o'clock in the morning. Generally, we need a hot afternoon to get a, a good bunch of uh, cape like that. So we've got energy, and that's that's potential energy. Again, just ready to be let go. There was hardly much of a cap. It was uh, a one-degree cap. Anything generally below a three-degree cap it can be broken. It will be broken. Uh, another parameter I look up look at is called helicity, and that is the twisting of the winds with height and uh, some and how the shear is involved and generally anytime I see a number around 200 I can say that uh, there's a pretty good chance that if a storm wants to go tornadic or if it has a tendency to it will well this morning's helicity reading was 571 so there's plenty of energy out there for tornadoes uh, another thing I look at is called the lapse rate in other words that's how how quick it cools off as you go up as you go up in the atmosphere this is what you look at for to see how the hail is going to be and um, lapse rates of generally six or more can cause some hail when you get close to eight it gets kind of scary and this morning's was 7.51 so that's going to cause some large hail our lifted index was already a negative five Again, 12 o'clock or 7 a.m. in the morning, that's a big lift index. The larger or the lower the negative, the more negative, should I say, uh, the more potential there is for severe weather. So, again, you're probably just confused as all kinds of get out just because I'm sitting here rambling this off. But I just wanted to kind of make sure I had that in the video just so that would be something I could go back and uh look on and remember Moran also just checking out what today is going to be like so again lots of parameters to coming together for a severe weather outbreak here in north central Texas and most much of te Texas here um, storms that will that form will generally move from the south southwest to the north northeast at about 31 knots the whole line itself again right now is moving eastward at about 10 miles an hour it's going to be a rough and bumpy two days probably here in Texas. So once again, I apologize to all, for all the folks that like to watch and I and, and talk about space weather. Um, space weather is not uh, overly active at the moment, so we're not missing out on or you're not missing out on too much from what I'm saying. Uh, check your local people that you like to listen to. Go over to SolarHam.com. That's S O L A R dot Solar S O L A R Ham one word dot com and uh, Kevin will keep you updated on all the what's going on with the space weather activity uh, right now today my main potential or my or my main uh, uh, concentration is going to be on the, the severe thunderstorms and the severe weather outbreak that's going to happen here in Texas southern Oklahoma today anyway again this is our from 47 Robert Vermillion coming to you from Dallas Texas Y'all stay close to the weather radio and keep your eyes to the sky. And y'all take care.